Hello, I'm Ryan and welcome to Vapertech. Today we're going to be doing a Suzuki coupling using a supported palladium catalyst in a column. This is what we need to do to get it ready. So the first thing to do is to put the catalyst in the column. I'm going to weigh the column first so I know how much catalyst I'm using. Using a funnel, I can add the amount of catalyst that I want to use. And this is just a commercially available supported palladium catalyst. So now I've added the catalyst to the column, I need to weigh it again to find out how much I'm using. The next important thing is to determine what the dead volume inside the catalyst is. The easiest way to do this is to flow solvent through, and then I can determine from the mass of solvent what the volume must be. The first thing I need to do is fit the plunger back into the top of the column. The easiest way to do this is to use the column lubricant that we supply with the column. Once the plunger is in place, I can rotate the nut at the end to move the plunger to the correct position. Now my column's packed, I need to weigh it before and after I fill it with solvent so that I can work out what the volume inside is. So now I've weighed my column, I need to put it inside the heat exchanger and onto the system so that I can flow the solvent through it. I now need to attach the tubing so that I can flow through. For displacing gas, we always recommend coming in from the bottom of the column and pumping upwards. Before I can fill the column with the solvent, I need to put the solvent on the system and prime the pumps. Using Flow Commander, I can set the flow rate that I want in order to fill the column up with the solvent so that I can determine my volume. So my column is now full of solvent. I'm operating with an 8 bar back pressure regulator and my system pressure is slightly higher than that because the column is generating some pressure of its own. I now need to tighten the plunger onto the column to make sure that I don't have any extra gaps. So now I'm happy that the column is full of solvent and I've got rid of any extra air bubbles. Now I need to stop pumping and reweigh my column to find out what that volume inside must be. So now I know the mass of the column with the solvent inside, I can work out what the volume must be using the density of the solvent that I used. Now I know the dead volume inside the column, I can put it back on the system and get ready to run the reaction. So now the column is back on the system and I need to add the other system solvent which are going to combine together in the preheater. Now I'm ready to load my reagents onto the reactor. I'm using sample loops today and this is how you load them. Before I load the loops, I need to make sure that they are in the load position. So before I load the loop, I want to make sure that it's empty so I don't get mixing with anything else. To do that, I'm just going to use a syringe to push some air into the loop and displace anything that might be in there. I'm using two milliliter loops today. To load the loop, I need to draw slightly more than that into a syringe and then I can manually inject into the loop now that I'm happy that it's empty. I load the other loop in exactly the same way. Now my reactor's ready, I can use Flow Commander to program my experiment. This page allows me to create an electronic record of the work that I'm doing. On this page, I tell the system what I'm using. I've already loaded my loops manually. On this page I can specify the system pressure limit, whether or not I'm using any kind of detection, and how I would like to collect my product. Now I can program the reaction. Flow command is able to collect my reaction product, so I'm going to put a vial under the collection valve. Before I run the reaction, I'm going to run with some solvent for a few moments just to make sure I get rid of any extra air that may have got in while I was opening and closing fittings. So now the system is full of solvent, I'm going to start the experiment and let Flow Commander take over. I can change the view to have a look at the reaction as it's running. If you want to scale a reaction up, instead of using the sample loops, you can pump directly from the reagent bottle. Let me show you how to put them on. First I need to put the reagents onto the reagent lines. Now I need to prime the pumps so that they have the reagents on as well. To do that, there's a slightly different order than with solvents alone. Okay. I'm still using a syringe to prime the pumps, but now I need to make sure that the switching valves are in the reagent position. Okay. Now I need to open the priming valve about one full turn. 
draw through about two millilitres of the reagent and then I need to switch the valve to the solvent position and draw through another two millilitres of the solvent this time. To prime the other pump is exactly the same. 